I think it's your turn. Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with Dave. And uh, today we're going to dive into legendary D&D monsters and we're going to talk about Orcus. You can dive into the description below where you can find Nerdarchy the newsletter and sign up for weekly gaming tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So, the legendary demon lord, one of the the, the, the top powers in the D&D universe. And he started like and he was one of the one of the first demon lords as well from original first edition Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you know, there's been tons of adventures and modules written around him. Uh, you know, the wand of Orcus is kind of like a big deal. Uh, and for you guys following along at home, we are in Out of the Abyss. Page 244 and 245 because he's a he's a full spread. So, you know, he, you know, he's this gr grotesque, bloated, giant, humanoid creature with goat legs, huge, rotting pot belly. Uh, you know, he's got a, a head of basically the, the, where the flesh is so, rotten away and it's like a goat skull. Yeah, it's a, giant a desic wing. desiccated goat skull. He's got wings that burst out of his shoulders. His weapon is called a wand, but it's more like a mace, you know, a, a mace if nothing else. Um, and he's actually a mightier foe than the Tarrasque. Eh, he's been around for a while, you know. When you're when you're ruling layers of hell, you know, you, you got some clout. So I, I am disappointed a little bit that uh, I believe traditionally Orcus is the and and Demogorgon are enemies. Right. And it makes no mention of that. Uh, so yeah, I'm a little disappointed with that. Uh, but you know, other than that, you know, th this is an epic write-up on on him, as far as the game stats go. Like mechanically, Orcus is a badass. Absolutely. Um, All right. So, were you looking at Demogorgon? I was seeing if there was any brief mention, and, and you know, while, while you were you know doing your doing your spiel, strength twenty-seven, dex fourteen, con twenty-five, intelligence twenty, wisdom twenty, charisma twenty-five. So I mean. He's he's off the charts as far as uh, you know stats. Um, yeah, you're not going to outthink him. You, you know, phys physicality wise, you're not going to be better than him. Well, and, except for know, that dex, I'm, that's clearly a weakness. Well, yeah, that 14 <laughs> dex. You know, uh -oh. And uh, Orcus is all about death and undead. Right. Yeah, he is, he is the the demon prince of undeath, known as the Blood Lord. Yeah. You know, at first, you know, reading that, I'm like. Blood Lord, huh? Because of you know mine Arquitas, but that's that's nowhere near. They're they're far afield of each other. Um, There's very little blood actually be <laughs> actually having to do with this. He, just, he he wants his, the blood drained from everything so it can just be you know his his undead minions. Um, and then you know the amount of undead that he can uh, conjure and summon is just disgusting. It, it is it is ridiculous. While holding the wand, Orcus can use an action to conjure undead whose combined average hit points don't exceed five hundred. <laughs> right. Well, and then he's got other abilities where he can animate dead and and things like that to actually increase even more undead. Right. And that that piddly ability of five hundred hit points worth of undead. He can only do that once a day. So, I mean, it's not like he's doing that every... Wait, he probably is doing that every <laughs> single day. <laughs> so. well, and it's funny because he's got an ability that can actually... Um, it, it doubles the damage for necrotic... Uh, mm -hmm. For necrotic damage, it gives vulnerability to necrotic damage. Right. It doubles it, essentially. But he also has Finger of Death that he can cast from the wand. So like I can just see him going around to like tenth level characters and be like, yeah, you're gonna be a zombie I own, you're gonna be a zombie that I own, everybody gets to be a zombie that I own, <laughs> you know. So uh, he's got a lot of really like, cool nifty abilities. Like one of his regional abilities is that wildlife just sp spontaneously uh, animates right. if they're d dead in his area. Like one of his lair abilities is if he knows you're in his lair. He can just cast Power kill. kill, right? He can just say <laughs> die, and you could be like anywhere in his in his lair, and you just keel over. <laughs> I mean, the, the saving throw is no joke either. So it's like <laughs> it's a DC twenty three, you know, in a game yeah. in a game where you know per, your proficiency bonus caps out at six, caps out at six, and your stat bonus caps caps out at so five. I, I I don't know what that uh. I mean, you, you know, need a 12 you, to pass that saving throw if that's your best thing you do. 
That's that's uh that's pretty potent. Yeah, There's some characters are a little bit better, maybe like a paladin or something. But right. yeah, it's still it's it's pretty impressive. Um, and then in addition to that, he even breaks some of the rules when it comes to creating undead. Like, you know, uh, generally when you create undead. You have to, um, you know, it has to be night or you can't do it. He's like, says, whatever. I don't care about that. I prefer to do it at sunrise. It, it's spiritual for me. It just feels good. <laughs> I like to do it. Yeah, the actual spell create undead. The first line of the spell description says this has to be done at night, and he doesn't care about that. Well, it's, yeah, he left out the part. It says, uh, first line of the spell says must be done at night unless your work is fuck off, cast it whenever you want, <laughs> something like that. But I might be paraphrasing. <laughs> He is he is literally off the charts with with so many so many abilities, um, and, and his options are are just just crazy. And oddly enough, when um, I was uh, writing Maze of Mandoon, uh, you know, parts of that module kind of like pay homage to Baphomet, mm -hmm. uh, and he's always one of the demon lords that I, I've personally revered. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes several mentions to, mentions of Orcus being like, hey, like, you know, unlike Orcus, you know, Baphomet did not get uh, his own module and then blah, 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 or mentioned until blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it, like, kept referring back to, like, you know. Orcus, Orcus, Orcus. <laughs> yeah, like, always Orcus. You know, and so I think, you know, there's, like, two or three modules that were written involving Orcus. Mm -hmm. and, and he's also, like, like, you know, for the old school gamers, like, you had the bottom of your dungeon, you know, 666 lo six levels or so, and then, like, that's the guy you would put there. Right. Yeah, you know, unless you're going to just use Asmodeus. But that's a de devil, completely different. So I, I think he is just, he is a powerhouse um, between lair actions, regional effects, his legendary actions... Uh, he, he's got the legendary resistance, so it's like, oh, he fell to safe. Oh, no, he didn't! Well, I mean, it only makes sense for those. Again, like, one of the regional effects, um, and, you know, this is a this is a theme that comes up over and over again in the out of the book, uh, this book, and that is uh, madness, you know, so, you know, what's one of the things that can happen just from bringing his thing in, in an area that he's been hanging out in? Is oh, you make a, make a wisdom saving throw, or you go pay basically permanently insane. Yo, uh, that and things spontaneously animating that you know that that's always great right like he you know you know he's a real necromancer's necromancer <laughs> like if you're gonna be a necromancer this is the guy you probably want to revere yeah this is a uh, definitely definitely a way to go if you're if you're into that whole uh undeath thing or uh, you know a fiendish pack warlock if you go fiendish pack warlock but you want to kind of like be heavy like kind of necromantic like that would be you know that if, if chill touch is gonna be your thing yeah. This could be your guy. This this would be your guy. I don't even know if Warlock's gonna chill touch or not. <laughs> it's not an Eldritch Blast. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So, you know, uh for legendary monsters, Orcus is probably like on the top of the food chain. Yenigu Yen uh, not Yenigu, we did him. Yeah. Uh, uh Demogorgon is probably gonna be the other one that's up there quite a bit. Uh, uh, uh Demogorgon is also a twenty six. Um like I said, my only uh, the artwork on him is really sweet too. My my biggest disappointment is it doesn't talk about the feud between Demigorgon and um, Orcus. Orcus, yeah, I would have liked to seen seen that. Yeah, a little homage paid there from the from the good old days. Yeah, I think they they um, they're sticking just to who the thing is that there isn't there isn't that really relationship in uh. In, well, you know, I guess like I mean this is getting a little bit off topic, but. A lot of these demon lords have such rich histories, and and varied for that matter, depending who was writing what edition. That I, I could see where it would be difficult uh, to figure out the canon. So you know they might go with a more, you know, more specific, less spread out canon. So so that you as the GM can put them in your game however you see fit. You know this is definitely a monster where you could start off with you know. You know, low level cult. All the demon lords work this way, really. Low level cultists, and then you can move up into like uh, minor undead along with the cultists, and you get a little bit more powerful undead, a little bit more powerful evil priests. You know, the the, the undead keeps ratcheting up until you get to like, you know, vampires, liches, uh, maybe even a and demi lich. And feel free to you know mix it up with with you know demons and things. 
in oh, there yeah. as well. Yeah, there's I demons mean, as well. You know, there's, there's no sense to just stick it to undead and, and, and people. But it's kind of his theme, though, you know? So I'm just saying, like, if you want to really, like, build a campaign around Orcus and the well, that, theme. That, that's true, but, I mean, you can build that with, with varying pieces. You know, well, you know, you have the, the you could have the undead uh, spellcaster summon the demons. That's that's true as well. Yeah. And don't forget to have uh, you know those those undead be descriptive and have them be orcs and goblins and humans and dwarves and elves so they don't all look the same. Well, yeah, you, there's that. <laughs> also, too, you could retool the uh, d uh, demons as well to make them have more of that uh, undead feel. Even if it's you know maybe in, in their appearance or how they interact with undead, to kind of, kind of I, I would tailor them a little bit like oh, yeah. like what I've done in the past when I've used uh, the the blood the blood demon you know so I made my I basically took the what are they, the Yenigals? Uh, no what are what are the yokels yokels yeah yeah and they look like they're made out of wax but right. I made them out in blood instead right. when you did the uh, the online game yeah yeah it was highly appropriate you could you could totally do the same thing with um any of the demons like right. that that specific demon is really fun because you can do a lot of different things with it like really what if what if it was like a tower of screaming souls and you know instead of um you know in, instead of the yokel or the blood demon look you just totally changed the look you could you know maybe even make it uh intangible like some of the See, I incorporal actually, like I, some of the other i was going to go the other way i was going to be like what, what if it was just a pile of bones that like the bones moved oh yeah you know, absolutely it, just, it flowed like a snake or whatever have you with this just you know conglomeration of skulls at the top to represent a head but it was a, a skull made out of skulls. Well, you know, you're your own game master. You can do it however you want. <laughs> but just, that, that's where the inspiration, inspiration took me. But that's my point. Like you can just take any of the demons out of the book and and change them. Change them. I bet there's even some demons that would make, like you could even do them in Orcus's image, mm -hmm. and, and they they kind of they kind of are like that a little bit anyway. Right. Or what about the uh, the gastro? The giant. It's like a it's like a giant demon. Like literally. I'm not familiar with that one. It's like tower sized. And okay. it, it's kind of looks like a bull or a minotaur. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, that would work. I don't, I don't know if it's in, it actually in this edition. Mm -hmm. I, I think it is, but it was definitely in previous editions where you could make it look like a giant Orcus and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. But it turns out like he's a bitch next to Orcus anyway. <laughs> but it'd still be really frightening to drop on your players. You know, when you, when you have this thing that's literally like looking over the wall of the city. Hello down there. Exactly. You know. <laughs> so just some ideas. You could definitely theme it up, or you know, you when you're using a demon lord, like that's a campaign. Yes. Yeah. You know, you're you're gonna end your campaign arc with like they're gonna you know close the portal, uh, kick him out of this world, or like if you really want to do something epic like paladins in hell, well in this case of the abyss, you know, you're, you're going down there to you know, you know to spank his honey on his well, home with turf. The, uh... With the demons in this book, they range from challenge 23 to 26, with um, uh, Orcus and Demogorgon being the being the, the toughest. Top. Yeah. yeah, everyone else is either a 23 or a 24. So you know, you got some options. But anyway, uh, especially I want to hear from you old heads that have been around for a while, <laughs> and you know you want to you put down all the cool Orcus facts from first edition and second edition that kind of get glossed over in uh, Out of the Abyss. Uh, I would love to read about them. Uh, for everyone else, while you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can uh, head over to Facebook and check out some funny memes. So until next time, stay nerdy. nerdy. So thanks for your turn. Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with... Dave. And uh, today we're going to dive into legendary D&D monsters and we're going to talk about Orcus. You can dive into the description below where you can find Nerdarchy the newsletter and sign up for weekly gaming tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So the legendary demon lord, one of the, 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 the top powers in the D, D universe. And he started like and he was one of the one of the first demon lords as well from original first edition. Shoulders. His weapon is called a wand, but it's more like a mace. you know a, a mace if nothing else. Um and he's actually a mightier foe than the Tarask. Uh, he's been around for a while, you know. 
when you're when you're ruling layers of hell and yeah, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, um, you know, there's been tons of adventures and modules written around him. Uh, you know, the Wand of Orcus is kind of like a big deal. Uh, and for you guys following along at home, we are in Out of the Abyss. Page 244 and 245 because he's a he's a full spread. So, you know, he, you know, he's this gr grotesque, bloated, giant, humanoid creature with goat legs, huge, rotting pot belly. Uh, you know, he's got a, a head of basically the, the where the flesh is so, rotten away and it's like a goat skull. Yeah, it's a, a giant de desic wing. desiccated goat skull. He's got wings that burst out of his 